Intel's Core i7 naming used to be the top dog of the consumer CPU market until not too long ago. First launched about 12 years ago, back in 2008, these reigned as the supreme processors for gaming and even workstation use for consumers for, well, forever, pretty much. Well, let's have a look at how that architecture holds up in 2020. My name is Chris, this is Coalition Gaming, and today I'll be your computer technician. Real quick, if you're new around here and are into PC hardware, tech, gaming, stream tips, news, and reviews, then you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button and that bell so you don't miss a single upload, and maybe hit that like button while you're down there. Anyways, let's get to the video. A friend of mine recently got back into PC gaming by buying a pretty badass gaming laptop and building up an entire battle station around it in his house. However, his old gaming desktop got set aside, never to be used again. He had asked how he could beef it up to possibly make it relevant again, and I did what I usually do when trying to make an old Intel system perform well again. I recommended a Xeon. So he dropped around 40 bucks on a Xeon X3470 4 core 8 thread CPU, which is equivalent to an i7 870, which is pretty cool because these pro processors used to go for three to 400 bucks. And then the project got swept aside again for like a year. Well, something came up and it became convenient for him to give me the computer. So I threw that shit in my truck and came home <laughs> to write this video. Time to take the system apart and man, is it a mess. I'm gonna be giving all these hard drives back to my buddy though. I'll be throwing in my usual 128 gig SSD plus 500 gig hard drive combo I do for systems like this. Anyways, digging into the system, I discovered a rather, or rather rediscovered since I originally helped him build this, an i5-750 quad core, 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, a gigabyte gap 55 ed 3 l motherboard, a GTX 560 Ti, and a Rosewell Green 700 watt power supply, all housed inside an Antec 902 case. I know it's old school, but I kind of dig the 200 millimeter fan on the top. Sweet, sweet air over the VRMs. More relevant now than it's ever been. I questioned whether I should keep the case or not and decided, eh, I would. So with some tech yes loving, I got it looking nice and clean again. I'll be throwing in a GTX 1660 Super for this video to show you guys what this CPU is still capable of all these years later. I'm also changing out the stock Intel cooler to this interesting $26 4 heat pipe one from Ide Cooling that I found on Amazon along with a minor CPU overclock. Regarding that overclock, I'll leave a link in the description down below from Tech yes City on a tutorial of how to overclock one of these processors. Threw some new fans in it as well and off to the races we go. So. Let's get to the benchmarks. And we're back. If you wanted to see how the 560 Ti that was in the system holds up in 2020, drop a comment down below, let me know. Also, what did you guys think? This thing can still pull, right? Anyone that watches the Yes Man already knew, but in the end, all I gotta say is, man, do I love Xeons. Now, my plan for this rig with the 560 Ti back in it is to ship it off to a friend of mine who, who moved away a few years back. 
He's a huge gamer, but also a father of four, and his kids are getting to that age where they can play PC games with him, but mostly right now they're into Roblox. So, Brian, I hope this thing arrives in one piece, and I hope your kids like it. To everyone else, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that like button. Follow us on all our socials, all linked down below, and feel free to drop a comment. What did you like best about this video? Let us know. All right, we're done here. See you in the next video. Bye. Oh, also make sure you click one of our recommended videos over here, relevant videos. We got all sorts of stuff. Make sure you check out the last couple of videos. They're really freaking good. Yeah. Okay, bye.